Hello and welcome back to the next version, or rather episode, of Painting with Rob. I'm your host, I think it's Rob, right about now? Yep, yep, that's my name. Can Hey, can you, can you stop? Are you going to stop? God, alright. Um, so in this installment, I'm thinking we're going with kind of a new topic. Something that I value from my childhood, maybe you value from your childhood, if you were a child at some point, because not all of us were. Um, that's right. <laughs> it's probably popped into your head the moment I said childhood. Because that's right, we're doing a Cabbage Patch doll. So the first step would be, obviously, to open up a new canvas. Um, I'm going to select a pink color right here. Uh, just a side note, uh, art is all about expressing yourself, and we're going to be expressing ourselves a lot, quite a bit. Make sure that your Cabbage Patch doll reflects who you are as a person. Um, and that's really all the best artwork you can make, is artwork that reflects who you are. Okay? So here we're doing the collar of the Cabbage Patch doll. I uh, want it to kind of spread out, and this will connect to the main body of the sweater, or I like to call it a jumpsuit, because Cabbage Patch dolls are creepy, and they are probably criminals at heart. Yep, so you're going to switch to your paint bucket tool, and you'll notice that I switched to a lighter shade rather than a darker to use as a fill color, and that's because it will make the kind of sweater really pop. Uh, whoops. Eh, it should be fine. I'm going to switch back to my brush tool and select this time a much darker shade of paint. And then this time, now I'm going to let the shoulders take form. Now you want your Cabbage Patch doll to reflect how a child would really look. So you don't want to make things, you know, too long. You want it to be perfectly pro proportionate. What helps is to envision a small child uh, while you draw, you know. Just in your mind's eye, have that picture ready so that you can make everything look completely natural. Um, and you can see I'm just doing a very basic outline of what the Cabbage Patch doll is going to look like. You know, none of this is set in stone. Uh, so you don't have to be afraid of maybe getting some things wrong. It's perfectly okay. Uh, art is all about getting things wrong. That's really the true meaning of art. And once again, I'm going to switch to a nice light shade. And I'm going to switch to my fill bucket tool. And I'm going to fill that in. Perfect. Now this is... This is the base layout for our Cabbage Patch doll. Now the next step is obviously the most iconic part, the legs. So you're going to want to get a nice shade of kind of skin-ish color, you know, skin-ish. Uh, you want it to be nice and dark because, I don't know if you've noticed, but most of the Cabbage Patch dolls have spent quite a bit of the time in the sun and it hasn't really helped uh, how they look. And they're often ostracized for that and they're not included in games. So here's the tricky part. The easiest way I find to do hands and feet on the ends of parts of like your arms or your legs and attaching them is to get in zoomed real close so you can work on all the minor details and start right where the cup, where the cuff of the arm begins and just replace that line with a line of skin or a line of salt. Boy, that, boy, that didn't make a lot of sense. Okay, so now that you've got the cuff all set up, now you can start to work with the fingers. And the fingers, I don't know if you've ever seen a hand or a hand has ever been shown to you. Uh, maybe you've never experienced that kind of thing, and that's perfectly okay. You know, it happens to all of us at some point. But uh, hands work similar to like a wrench works, where the main part has fingers coming off of it, similar to like a monkey wrench. Um... So you want your artwork to completely reflect how a real hand works. And in doing that, you can make it look very realistic, such a way that you want your artist, or uh, sorry, your viewer, you want whoever's looking at your art to really understand the emotion that went into it. To help with emotion, I mean, you know, art is all about emotion. Uh, it helps to trigger some old traumatic childhood memories, uh, for instance, Cabbage Patch dolls specifically come to me uh, as a traumatic experience because since the fire, I had always loved playing with them. 
Uh, and then we had a second fire, and all my dolls were destroyed. And that really, that was a, that was a sad time. Uh, so once you've got the first hand all set up, and your fingers are all splayed out, uh, there should be five in total. You can switch over to your other hand. And most people think that um, you know the left hand is a complete mirror of the right hand, and that's not true. You know, art is all about not being symmetrical. You know, really asymmetrical. That's what art is. Uh, it's all about asymmetry, right? So with that in mind, you want to start on your left hand. Um, and I'm not saying that it has to be completely different in every way from the other hand, you know. Keep the basic things like the shape completely the same. Uh, keep the number of fingers, the shape of the fingers, the direction of the fingers, skin tone. Uh, really, every visible characteristic should be the same. But don't be afraid to experiment, you know. Everything has to stay the same but it does still have to be different. And that's what art is all about. Art is all about being different. Uh, so I'm gonna switch to my fill bucket tool just to speed this up a bit. Uh, it's okay to leave a little fragment of cloth inside of the hand poking through from the inside of the sweater uh, because the Cabbage Patch dolls really weren't perfect. They had a lot of flaws. Uh, and I think that our artwork should really reflect that. Uh, so once again, don't be afraid to really get out there. <laughs> with your artwork. Make sure that everything is well constructed. You want it to come off as unique, but you also want it to come off as the same as every other piece of artwork that's ever made, been made, right? So you want to be different, but at the same time, not be different. And that's, God, that's something that a lot of artists struggle with, okay? So now that we've now that we've got the hands done, we're going to move on to the more iconic part, the feet, okay? Now the feet are probably the most important part of any Cabbage Patch doll. Um, you can see the ankle, the ankle comes down uh, similar to any human foot. Um, often I compare my feet, or other people's feet I sometimes compare to bare feet. Uh, not bare feet as in no socks, because you need socks all the time. Um, but rather the feet of a bear, like a mother bear or a papa bear. Uh, so there are a lot of similarities between, between hands and feet, the main one being the five fingers. So the, for every finger on your hand, there's a toe on your foot. And I'm not saying that your Cabbage Patch doll has to be the same as a human, but a Cabbage Patch doll is the same as a human. So that's just something you want to take into account. Um, you'll notice that I'm not using the color changer to change the skin tone when I'm using the fill bucket to fill in uh, the hands and feet. And the reason for that is I'm not a filthy racist. So once you have the uh, skin tone on your brush, you can go, uh, after you've made one foot, create an exact mirror image of it on the other side. Because unlike feet, hands are, oh sorry, unlike hands, feet are exactly the same in every single aspect. And you need your Cabbage Patch doll to reflect that. But at the same time, don't listen to me. Use your brush, and after you've completed your feet and your hands, we're going to move up to the more iconic part, which, of course, is the head. Uh, all Cabbage Patch dolls have a head. Oftentimes, you can buy some illegally that do not have heads, uh, which is illegal, as I've stated previously uh, when I, in that same sentence I said that. Uh, so just be very careful not to get traced. Uh, so you want to get a nice, rich green color, one that reflects the life that you see in cabbage uh, and you want to start from the sides and work your way down and you want it to be nice and round you don't want it to be in the shape of a human head because in reality a cabbage patch head a cabbage patch doll head uh, is a lot more like maybe iceberg lettuce than it is the same as a normal human's head uh, and then you want <laughs> grab your colors get a nice dark one and then use your fill bucket to fill it in. And now once it's all filled in, you get back zoomed in right there on the head and use an even darker shade to go in and do the overlaps uh, and all the fine details. Uh, be sure to embrace what you learned during your internship at a cabbage patch farm uh, or the factory where they attach the cabbages to the dolls. Um, it's all very valuable information. I know most of us when we were 
when we were working on the cabbage farm, we probably thought to ourselves, I'm never going to have this have a use for this information, but here you are in an art class using it. Uh, so the world really is a magical place, and art is all about magic. Uh, so right about now, I think we're just about done. Um, it should bring out feelings of your childhood. Even I'm, I'm tearing up at the sight of a classic um, doll that I used to play with all the time, of course, before the fire, and then after the fire, but before the second fire, and then after the second fire, we couldn't afford any more dolls. Uh, I had I had spent every last penny. Oh God, no, it's okay, it's okay. We we have to push through. It's not a it's not a big deal. I'm okay. Um, so you're gonna want to work on the shadows next. Take out your pencil tool as we usually do, and zoom in real nice, and make sure that you use every single aspect of each body part that you included in your drawing of the Cabbage Patch doll. You take the iconic feet, you take the hands, which are, if you followed my instructions, the hands should be exactly similar, uh, and the feet should be completely different, and the head is, of course, the classic head right shape. So we're going to start off by just getting every single part of this right. And the important thing is not to mess up even a little bit. Because even if you mess up even just a little bit, your your audience will be able to know. They'll be able to see right when they take a look at the artwork. They're going to think to themselves, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing because he got the shapes wrong. Or she. Uh, art is all about sh being a woman. So once you have the basic shape done, uh, and it's okay if you don't include every single body part in the shadow, because it's not about including every shape in the shadow. Art is all about knowing when to quit. So you use your paint bucket to fill that in. Um, and the result really should be a... <laughs> the, the result really should be a completely accurate depiction of the classic children's doll, um... In case you didn't notice, we this is I think this is the American Girl doll we've been drawing, um, and with anything there comes some aspect of branding. Uh, so we're going to just make a quick label, Albanian Girl doll. There you go. And now not only is it a tool for children to play, but it's also a tool for advertising and to make your company money. And in the end, isn't money the real motivation behind everything? I, I hope this helped. I mean, I feel like it did. I think everybody learned something. Um, again, if you're having troubles with painting, please just give up. Art is all about giving up. Okay? So don't be afraid to just throw in the towel and quit for good. In fact, it's not even... I'm, I'm not even asking anymore. Stop making art, okay? If it doesn't come out good on the first try, give up. Give up on art. Art is all about giving up. 